10 cents. Florida has a newer, better car seat law for kids. We're on a mission to make sure all kids are ready in the right car seat. Drivers must use federally approved, correctly installed car seats for children until age six. The weight and height of a child is the most important in finding the perfect fit. Always follow the car seat manufacturer's recommended guidelines. Babies and toddlers should ride in a rear-facing car seat as long as possible. Young kids are safest in a forward-facing car seat. Do the pinch test to make sure the harness is not too loose. Once they reach the maximum size limit on the car seat, it's time to travel in the booster seat. If you love me, buckle up and watch me go. We're Car Seat Crusaders and you can be one too. Be a hero, protect your child in the right car seat. Remember, it's the law. I love that kid. That little over at the end is perfect. But what we were trying to do was to put a good spin on something that we were disappointed in. But that's what you do. Okay, so we're asking people to put this up. I know that the St. John's Tax Collector now has this on their website, and we're hoping that others will join in, because if we can get the word out, we can change things. So one of the things that I wanted to do was to give you just the last two years I did want to stretch out 13 and 14 because 14 and 15 are the two where we can make actual comparisons. The number of seats checked, we increased the number. The seats correct, you know, that number went down, but I'm okay with that because what we're looking at is the misuse rate. When you're looking at, from the year before, an 88% misuse, that means that 80 out of, 88 out of 100 cars were wrong, which freaks me out, but when you compare it to the national rate, was it 92%? I'm okay with that. We're doing much better. So this past time, we actually checked more seats, fewer were correct, but our misuse rate went down 84%. Now one of the things that anybody that talks or stays around me long enough will know, I don't like talking misuse because to me that's saying like, look at our mistakes. Ugh, gross, don't do this. Our problem has been on the national level, when they talk about the misuse rate in the state of Florida, they are basing it on Safe Kids data. I don't have a problem with that. We were part of Safe Kids. Right now, we have 67 counties. How many Safe Kids organizations are there in this state? Does anybody know? It's about 12. They're all located south of the border, the border being Ocala. They're down that way. We have Jacksonville. And then all the way up to Pensacola, there is nothing. So that's 34 counties in the districts two and three, 33 that don't have the same kids. So the data that they're giving us and saying, this is what's wrong in your area, is from Miami and Central Florida. It's very different in the rural areas. We know this and we've been trying to combat it. So that's why Ralph and I went to a system where we would provide the car seats, but you've got to give us the data. We're looking at this now and we can say, okay, we're making some inroads. The other thing is to look at what I call the new installs. Now this is still driving me crazy. If they drove in and the car seat is in a, in a box, or if they drove in and they bought it from you, that's a new install. If they came in with a kid in another car seat and you bought a new one, that's not a new install. They came in in a car seat. But what we're looking at is the data for the people that were educating before they had these kids. They're the ones that I'm hoping that they don't come back every five or six months for us to reinstall their stupid car seat because we taught them. That way we can combine these numbers. Now if I turn this number in of 33% and 31%, what do you think the feds would do to our money? You guys are doing good. We're going to send this somewhere else. It's an unrealistic number when you're comparing it with what they guided by on the, on the national level. In the most recent papers that are being published by Safe Kids and NHTSA, they will talk about there's 48% misuse with kids from <coughs> one to zero to one. There's 32% misuse from two to three, so they're breaking it down. They're, I think they're finally realizing that we've been doing this since, well, I've been doing it since 1992. The misuse numbers don't change because every year we get a crop of new moms coming in and we get all these new fangdangled car seats, which even I'm having trouble reading the instructions. So I can understand we're just looking at it from a different standpoint. I'm telling you, we're doing good. I'm happy with this. The number of OPR seats has, uh, seats 
distribution has increased. And then we've got the errors. So I know that when I'm looking at the errors, selection errors, child placement errors, installation errors and recalls, our biggest problem is still the installation. Now there's a really cool seat on the market right now. You set it down, it's by four moms. It installs itself. It only costs $480. <laughs> so we're not going to have a whole bunch of those. But at least technology is trying. But I am very happy about this. Um, one of the things that I'm looking at too, in Florida in 2013, it said there was 1,989,752 thousand. All of these families with 3.8 million kids under the age of six. So when I look at the number of seats we checked, I'm thinking, oh my God, we're missing half the population. More than half, my math is really not that great. <laughs> but one of the things that we've got to get to are these areas where we're not seeing it. And that's another reason that Ralph and I have been stressing so hard to get into the rural counties with these programs, because now we're hitting the areas that always before never got the car seats, never got the instruction, and the people are all wandering around doing what they want. If you don't believe that, come to some of our checkpoints. Coming soon. We are very excited. We have been talking about an electronic form for, oh dear God, what, three years? I've been begging, screaming. I've got the blast thing. It's on my little tablet. I can play with it. But we haven't quite figured out how to get it off my tablet and into other places. But we've got it. The money is set aside. We are going to do this. We're also looking, um, the lady that I normally teach with, Tammy Horvath, she and I have a trailer that we have stocked with our own car seats and everything. And if you've ever done a training class with us, I think Sue Litton can tell you, it's really nice. You don't have to undo and redo and all of this sort of stuff. So we are going to create those throughout the state. There will be tubs of dolls, seatbelt kits, training seats, and we are gathering car seats. I've already got a storage facility. Allison and I, we need to move those seats, don't we? Uh, we've got everybody that's got seats that they've either been in a crash or They've gotten used, you know, gotten rid of them. We're cleaning them. We're putting in this thing. We're going to use those in the trailers. So we'll have seats to train with because this is what a lot of instructors tell me. They don't have the equipment to do this. We're also looking at statewide instructor meetings where we can bring everybody together because to get one of these trailers, you're going to have, I'm going to make sure that you're doing this curriculum correctly. It's not an easy curriculum. It's a college-level course. And unfortunately, I think in some areas, um, we haven't had quite the mm, consistency that we're looking for. We're going to make sure that we have that. I'm very excited about that. Now, the state seatbelts, Ralph stole my thunder. But one of the things that I like to look at is the fact that what has it done over the years? Well, you know, Florida has been taking a hit because we don't have a booster seat law. They scream at us every year, hello, get over yourselves. We've got an enhanced law, we're doing the best we can, and our numbers I'll put up against some of these other states just about any time. But if you look at the seatbelt numbers for the drivers, this is on the state surveys, you'll notice that we have been, since 2009, above the national average. Has anybody said that to you? No. I'm getting tired of getting yelled at at these conferences, can you tell? I showed them the video at the last one and they stood up and applauded. For once they didn't say, you don't have a booster seat law. I was really pleased. But one of the things that we're stuck at is that 89.4. We need to jack this up for more reasons than one. Uh, and these are the top 10 counties. Now this has been handed to us and we're going to run with this. These are fatalities and injury counties. These are the highest 10 in each of the subgroups. Of population. The horrifying thing when you look at group three, oh my god, it's all district two and three guys with the exception of, no, it's all district two and three. Group two with the exception of Flagler and Monroe and Martin and Indian River is all districts two and three. These are all of the rural areas. So this is where we're, we're going to focus. And if you notice, I put down there, only 41% of the occupy protection seats went to all 30 of these counties. That means somebody else got a buttload of car seats. So we're, we're going to have to really pay attention to what's going on in these areas. If you're high in the matrix, we're going to be looking at this. We're not quite sure how we're going to do this yet, but we are going to be. So it's very important. 
these are the areas. Now, I know I just taught a county, uh, a class in Citrus County, Suwannee County, <gasps> Columbia County. We're getting there, but there's needs to be a lot more, and that's why we're going to be asking some of the other instructors to start helping us out with some of these smaller areas. Community data. So we've got state data. We break it down by county as far as occupant protection. But what we don't have is survey data from all of the smaller areas. Our survey seatbelt survey, what is it, 15 sites? Yes. Yeah, and they're all selected. You're not supposed to know where they are. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> but what you've got to do now is we need more information. What's going on in our other areas? Yeah, you're laughing. These are this the picture there and the pickup truck. That's Jacksonville, I-95. The one in the left drove into my checkpoint, and my technician stood up and said, you have got to see this. It's an engineer from the University of Florida, what can I say? And I'm not even going to touch the baby on board. But, you know, you don't have to be an expert to do a car seat survey. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be extensive. You need to be able to tell your people what you're doing. I worked at Shams for 10 years. And at about midpoint through that, they were, somebody said something about a seatbelt survey. And I said, well, I don't know what it is here. So we went and stood one morning for two, or for, it was 45 minutes. 45 minutes I stood in with everybody that was coming into the garage. Oh, my Lord, I was stunned. We immediately did a couple of uh, you know, little events in the atrium, just showing them pictures and statistics. And then we went back and did a post-survey, and holy cow, the number shot up to about 90-something percent. I was stunned. And that's what I was like, hey, Ralph, you won't believe what just went on here. And that's where a lot of what we were doing came about. So what we're trying to do is get people to do surveys. You've got two simple samples. Simple samples. Let's say that again. That's right. The first one is what we used in our county when we were just doing the drivers and all. Because primarily in a parking garage chance, there weren't any kids in the car. We were the employee. The other one is the one that we use for the minority task force. It's a little bit more detailed, but what it does is give you a very good overview of what you're looking at in your community. You can go to one of your local grocery stores. Best, best place to hit them, and you're going to love this church Sunday morning. Find a parking lot where they can only go in one way or out one way. You sit and do those people coming in. Then you go in and you tally up your numbers and you go to the preacher the next time. Hand out the buckle up religiously folder things we've got. They're great. Talk to them. Tell them what happens. And then you go back and do your post survey. You're going to be stunned at the change it will make. This is what we use with the task force, with the minority task force in Jacksonville, when we jack their numbers by 8.2% and 7.9%. You don't get numbers like that in the other kinds of surveys. This is down in personal, as Ralph will tell you. Almost every store we went into, people were like, well, it's about time you got here. Yeah, they want the information. They understand. So it's not that difficult. The big thing is use the same day and time of the week at the same location and make sure it's consistent. That's important. Because you can turn around and go to your, your police chief or your mayor and say, hey, this is what's going on in our community. We need to address this. That's all it takes. There's simple materials, the whale stickers, that was a picture in the cafeteria we went in, handed out Spanish materials, and the mom sitting there, and put it in the kids. They, they catch on. They understand. And what you've got to do is get the information in front of them. Ask for volunteers. Hopefully your volunteers are better than mine were. <laughs> yeah, that's my nephew, Miles. And Miles is now... That's Miles. That's a real gator. I don't even talk about it. But he is a, a CPS tech. He's done all of the training with us. And if I could ever get him to stand still long enough, I'd make him an instructor, along with Krista. <laughs> but he's getting the information out. The tip cards, the whale stickers, buckle up religiously, the CPS video. All of these can be put in places where people see them. If they see them, it sparks that little thing in their brain. At least, hopefully, it sparks something in their brain. You've got to get the interest out there. Educate the people you're serving. It does you no good whatsoever to go and do a survey over here and then split all your education over in that area and then come back and survey. It doesn't work that way. You've got to find out. That group, that's why I love the churches, captive audience, works like a charm. 
once you've done that education, then you go back and you do your post survey. Get your results into the community. I don't care if it's newspapers, television, if it's available, let's be honest. I'm in Gainesville. My news comes out of Fox out of Orlando, uh, as, what is it, NBC out of Jacksonville. I think we have a Gainesville station. I'm not sure. I stay away from it most of the time. <laughs> Facebook, church bulletins, Twitter, ladies auxiliaries. Any of these groups that you can go into and get this information out there, it will spread. Because somebody in there will go home and say it to somebody else. Word of mouth is our best friend at this. These small steps will make a major move towards our goal, which is saving lives. Okay, here it comes. This is the last CTST coalition meeting before Click It or Ticket begins. So I'm issuing a challenge to all of the rest of the CTST team and <coughs> members across the state of Florida. Let's make this the year where we finally surpass 90%. I'm tired of this. We've got to break that barrier. Let's make occupant protection a priority again and send the right message from the boots on the ground. We will make a difference. Why do we do this? Because you'll never know how many lives you save. 